right? You're listening to the Coach Hodge and Bank Show on the Coaching Culture in Athletics Radio Broadcast Network. Sit back and enjoy the show. Please note, the views and opinions discussed in this podcast aren't necessarily the opinions of the host and or Coach Hodge and Banks show on the Coaching and Culture Athletics Network. All right, ladies and gentlemen, hey, I want to welcome you to another, it's the, it's episode two, it's the Coach Hodges and Coach Banks show, and I, I, I got to throw out a, a special thank you to Benji, Benji Gertis, uh, that created that intro, uh, for us, Ryan. At least I hope it was that one and it wasn't the one that was, you know, had profanity and stuff like that, because we wouldn't want that on coaching culture and athletics. But you're listening to, uh, you know, the, the, the Coach Hodges and Coach Bank show. And we, we just appreciate you coming in. Uh, you know, we're shared out. Uh, this show personally will be on iTunes probably in the next month or so. And Coach Hodges and I are trying to uh, do this a little bit more frequently at a time that we can get people in the chat. But if you click on the Spreaker link, you're going to want to go to Spreaker, click on the link, and then you can get in the chat room and you can send us questions, this, that, and the other. Now, Coach Hodges was a little bit nervous uh, you know, uh, about being seen. Okay. And <laughs> it's one of those things, but anyway, coach, let's, let, let's break the ice this week, uh, talking about kind of your, your, your holiday weekend, because, because as a coach, we need to spend time with our family. And, 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 and I think family is, is just as valuable to a coaching or an athletic culture than anything else. So, so how was your weekend? What'd you do? Well, first of all, hi everybody. Uh, hope you're uh, enjoying the show so far. And, uh, like like Chuck said, hopefully we can do this on a more regular basis. Um, so hope you guys enjoy this. Ask questions, and uh, we don't know all the answers, but hopefully we can answer something. But uh, no, my weekend was great. Um, we actually got uh, Tuesday night's game. We were supposed to play at Van Buren. Um, there was a schedule conflict. We ended up having to cancel that game. Um, so we played Monday night. We won two games Monday night at Sheraton. Um, Pretty, pretty well. Guys played really well. I was really happy of how they handled themselves after, you know, a tough loss on the Friday night before, um, you know, they bounced back pretty well. Um, then we just, uh, we practiced on Tuesday morning and then I gave them the rest of the week off and we'll practice tomorrow night and Tuesday, get ready for the big week, the next five games. Uh, but we actually had, my wife and I had our, uh, all of our family together, both sides today to celebrate, um, our son Lennox, uh, turning one, he turned one on, uh, the 22nd of June and our daughter is third birthday is tomorrow, Amelia. So we just, we had a one big, one big birthday party. So it was great, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Us coaches need to, uh, you know, we need to get away from our players some and them away from us and kind of, um, you know, re-energize. And I think one thing with our baseball program, um, that I'm very happy with is the fact that we, uh, we're a family and, you know, it goes back to where they show up to, to the hospital when both my kids were born. And, you know, so that's something special that my wife and I, Danielle, are going to be able to remember for a long time. And um, that just shows that they care. And, you know, I bring that in there. I always tell them, guys, if you have something with family come up, go take care of it. I'm never going to I'm never going to discipline you on that. Um, you know, life's too short. And, you know, enjoy every breath that you have with your family. And, you know, I, I, I have to totally agree with that. Uh, St- Steph and I didn't do a whole lot, but, you know, we got to spend some some quality uh, R&R together, uh, you know, as my kids get older. You know, I'm, I'm kind of on the other end of the spectrum, you know. I, I have the, the grandbaby, the, the other grandbaby on the way. And then, by the way, uh, if my oldest is listening uh, overseas, I got to give, uh, you know, Chelsea a shout out because... Uh, I'm, I'm sure she's going to listen to this a uh, l- little bit later on down the road and that sort of stuff. I also, uh, I, I got to give props. And, you know, uh, the, the social media thing, uh, you know, you know what's weird is uh, Coach Hodges and I both handle, 
you know, the, the social media formats. And at CCA Culture is, is where you can follow us on Twitter. And you know what's weird is, is I'll show up and I'll see all these people added. And I'm like, well, who the heck's this person? And then I have to realize that Coach Hodges is on the other side, you know, clicking those as well. So, uh, in, anyway, we'll, we'll, both of us are, are more than likely to get back to you if you have any questions, you know, through that as well. Um, you know, I, I again, I got to give props to you guys, the the Centerville Big Reds, on winning a conference title. Uh, you know, you, you, and you've had a great record, uh, outstanding. I also got to give props to the Central Lee Hawks that uh, won their first state title. I want to say, uh, you know, way back when when those kids were in fourth grade was the last time that Central Lee Hawks won a won a uh, conference title. So give props to them as well. Yeah, that's awesome. I know there a few years ago we played those guys and, you know, I was impressed with the way they got, you know, they handled themselves and, you know, they had some good young players and we played them and um, it was just kind of one of those things where I think, you know, just, you, you know, you go out and you, you, you sow that seed and, uh, you know, you build something. It's like that farmer going out in their field, you know, you got to take care of that crop or um, for it to take care of the program and take care of you and the school and the, the community. And um, I've heard great things over there. So, yeah, congratulations to them too. You know, I, I love it how you bring in the farm talk because in my book, I, I talk about culture as if you have an onion and you have to peel those layers away in order to find out if there's a problem or not. And there's a lot of crying with onions. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of crying with coaching. I'm not, yes, I'm not, yes. I'm not going to lie there. Now, but it is. I mean, so many, you know, so many people, they, you know, farming wise, and, uh, you know, my dad has a, my dad and my grandpa, started something great with their big family farm. And, uh, you know, I, and I always tell our guys, it's like the farming. I'm not going to, we're not going to show up on May 13th or whatever and expect to just say, Hey, throw out the balls and we're going to get going. You know, we have to, it's a culture thing where they know I'm, I'm watching their basketball games or football games, um, track cross country, whatever there may be in. And I support them. And, um, you know, they know that I'm going to, I might call them into the office if they do something. I don't, you know, I wouldn't accept in, in, in our, program and you know so hold them to that standard outside of even baseball I think is huge and I think um, you know things are going pretty well on the coaching side here at Centerville where all of us coaches are on board and you know saying the same things and so they're hearing it multiple times throughout every everything that they're in and we have so many kids like you guys I'm sure are four sports some of them five sport athletes and so when they hear it over and over again it's embedded into them and they're like our kids you know we spend so much time with them and um, you know, we want to see them do well in the sport and outside of sport. And so when they're hearing all that, it's like that farmer going out and you have to spray your crops. You have to make sure, you know, y- your cows are getting the adequate water and feed. And, you know, so you have to take care of it. That's that product of that culture, I think. Yeah. And and, and I think a big one is, is you have to get rid of that stigma in your coaching staff uh, school wide where, where, you know, you're, you're not saying, oh, you're, you're, you're lifting weights this morning? No, we have a big game tonight. You know, and, and, and I think, uh, you know, we, we've seen it. We, we, we've both seen that multiple times where, where coaches aren't on board or they're not communicating properly. And, uh, you know, that, that, that stigma is just plain wrong. But um, I, I, I feel that uh, both of our schools are definitely headed in the correct location when it, when it comes to, to building a program where all coaches are kind of, you know, on board. I'm not saying the good old boys club and all that crap, but – you know, it, 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 it is what it is. Now, let's let's talk about, you know, our, our, our big topics tonight are, you know, what makes or breaks a culture in athletics, but but also what if the culture shifts? What if what if you have that perfect culture out there? You're winning, uh, you know, you're 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 not having the big parent issues, which which is utopia, that'll never happen, right? Uh, and yeah, but but you have these things and and, you know, then, then all of a sudden it stops, you know, it, it, it goes stagnant. But let's start out first by what makes a great culture. Oh, man, I, you know, I think, I think there's so many things. I mean, um, you know, obviously I think one of the first things, and I think I kind of touched base on this <clears throat> in our previous podcast is, is the fact that, um, you know, I think that you, you always have to have a vision, um, you know, of where, where you want to go. And I think so many times, community parents, coaches, I mean, players, they get wrapped up into winning. And um, I feel like if you care about the person and you genuinely show that and you love them, um, I think that's the big thing. And I think if you show that love, not just in your sport or if you talk to them and maybe have some tough conversations now and then and and try and lead them in a path that's going to make them successful in the future beyond whatever the sport is, um, I think that's number one. I think 
I think they see that. And I think that's genuine. Um, so having that vision and love, um, you know, before you are quote unquote good. Um, another thing I think is be who you are and have that conviction. Um, you know, I tell our guys all the time, we're going to run into some adversity. We're going to, what's going to show me what kind of team we are is how we're going to bounce back from it. And, you know, if we lay an egg and we come out the next game and we're flat or the next night and we're flat, that's showing me something. And that's on me as a coach. And, and I tell them all the time, I'll give you guys all the glory. You get all the glory. I'll take all the, all the complaints and all that. I, you know, I've got broad shoulders. I can handle that. So, I mean, I think, but again, be who you are, grow, you're going to change as an individual. Um, and I say be who you are because the guys are going to see that or the girls are going to see that, that we're playing the state championship game. I got to be the same way August 3rd this year as I am May 3rd, you know, when we start practice, I can't, I can't waver from what I, you know, what I am. And, you know, one, one short story here real quick was two years ago, we were playing the semifinal game and uh, Braden Lechtenberg, great kid, um, a, a kid that uh, would do anything for the team. And I always kind of, said if as he was through high school he never he never started a lot never played great kid though and you know high character um and I applaud his parents for that but uh I I think that I told everybody I'm like if I have a chance to bunt in a game in a big game championship game get to state whatever the case may be Braden's my guy because I know he's going to do whatever he can because the ego is not going to be there and he's going to do it for the team and that's what we want and so you know you fast forward now to when he was a senior, um, Caden Cosrich goes down with a, a hip injury. So I'm sitting there scratching my head saying, okay, you know, Caden's going to be the guy hopefully going to be able to hit and Braden going to play second. He goes and makes a play in the Eddieville game in our first round of the district tournament that uh, unbelievable play. He doesn't make that play. I wholeheartedly believe we're out first round, you know, and we go on and go to the semifinals. So now we get in the semifinal game and he goes and tries to make a tough play backhand and, doesn't make it. A lot of guys wouldn't make it. And I had a couple of players come in and like, Hey, you think we should be? And I said, no, he got us here. And I think that's that conviction part and be who you are. And, and they understood, I'm not going to waver from something because what's that going to do to that kid? And I think, you know, I think our players know that. So, um, you know, and I think ownership, um, you know, give the guys and the girls ownership of their program, uh, you know, ask them, you know, feedback, obviously you got the final say. Um, and I think one of the other big things is, uh, vulnerability at me as a coach, I've got to be vulnerable. I got to, I and you and all these coaches have to realize we're going to make mistakes, you know? And, and I tell them that if I'm going to get you thrown out at home, it's not on you. You come hard. If I get you thrown out, I'll take the blame. Um, I may put on a bunt or a hit and run. I'm like, ah, I should have done that. You know, I try and put them in every successful situation, but I think just that vulnerability too is huge just so they know that I'm human. I make a mistake. I can admit it, you know, and that you're not going to be perfect. You know, and, and, and I absolutely agree. And, and I'm not just saying that, folks, you know, to, to kiss his butt because he's got a good story. No, I'm, I'm not saying that. I, I, I'm saying that because I, I've also seen that. You know, as soon as your organization, you know, is, you know, takes charge, you know, they, 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 they're, they're able to uh, bounce, you know, o- over these uh, adverse situations, which are important. Uh, you know, you, you know, you're getting somewhere. So uh, a guy by the name of KJ Scalp, he follows us on Twitter. Uh, he's a senior ball player with the Central Lee Hawks. And, you know, this kid uh, played ball all the way up. And, you know, I, I thought it was real interesting. His, his coach, Shane Wyrather, said uh, of him that he never gave up. He worked hard all the way. And then he finally got a shot his senior year. And, you know, he's, uh, he, he's, he's got some key hits for those guys, you know. And they were able to beat some quality teams uh, be, because of his at-bat. So that's, that, that's something uh, that, that, that I think is important. And, and sometimes I think coaches overlook some of those uh, some of those eighth grade freshmen sophomores that are coming in, and sometimes the door gets shut, and and I think that hurts the culture. What do you think about that? Oh, absolutely, and you know, and I think on the other on the other spectrum, and I think you know, I've I've had you know, I've had these issues, and I'm I'm sure other coaches have, but um, I think that on the other side of it, you have these kids that mature so much faster than other kids, and they're the next big thing in, in athletics and they're already pegged to be the best 
athlete that goes through Centerville, goes through Moulton, goes through Moravia, wherever the case may be. And to me, and I try and talk to those kids and say, hey, we're going to do what you're capable of doing. And I say that because these kids have so much other pressure going on outside of a sport yeah. that I don't want any added. And I tell them all the time, you know, winning a state championship is not going to define you as a person. And if that does, if that defines me as a coach, as a, as a person, I've got, tr- I've got real issues with my, myself and y- you know, is it great? Absolutely. And it's something to hang your hat on and you can, you know, and talk about and kind of glorified it down the road, but you have to look at down that same spectrum of these kids that have so much pressure on them. I try and take that off of them. Just be who you are. I was talking to one of my players the other day. I said, Hey, you're struggling at the plate. Look over your left shoulder. And he looks, and I said, look over your right shoulder. He looks and said, you see anybody behind you? No. I said, relax, dude, just get up there, get out of your head. Let's, you know, you, you know, you know, I trust you and we're going to work through this. And so I think, um, you know, absolutely. I think that too many people, um, you know, overlook those guys. One guy, you'll know him, Richard England. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, he's a, he's a guy that when he was in uh, freshman and sophomore, I said, man, this guy, he's got some potential and he ends up being our stud, you know, his senior year pitching and it, it, most of his junior year. Then he goes on and does great things and he's throwing the ball mid nineties and, you know, has a shot to maybe get drafted and he doesn't, but you know, he didn't let that define him to where he didn't quit working. And so those are the, those are the stories that I think that you have to, you have to let kids mature and give them every chance they can to be successful and put them in, in those successful situations. And they know that again, it goes back to that vulnerability that I trust you. So if I trust you and I, I admit to my faults too, you got to know that I'm going to, I'm going to put you out there and trust you. So go do what you can do and make the plays you can make. Now, you know, as a coach, I'm sure that you went through this as well. But you know, let's let's go back at the early process. You know, as a coach, did you did you find uh, any situation in the past, uh, Ryan, where where you pulled a kid, you know, to to send a, an absolute message, and it, it backfired on you? Have, you? have you ever had that issue, or 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 is this something that's in, uh, in, in embedded in your culture where kids understand? Hey, you know what? If you're off tonight, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be off tomorrow. If you work harder, yeah. I mean, I I think um, you know one thing that I'm thinking about is it it backfired on me on the case of you know one of our one of our uh, quote unquote good guys a few years ago where. Um, you know, he kind of showed me up on the mound a little bit when I took him out. And, um, you know, that's one thing I said, I'm never going to demean or or show a kid up, but, um, you know, I put him at third base, said, all right, go to third base. He goes third. And in my head the whole time, I know what I'm going to do. So as I'm walking back to dugout, I yelled at the other kid. I said, Hey, you're going to go to third base. So the kid comes in. He's like, well, why'd I get taken out? I said, let's talk. You know what? You know, he starts going off. I said, that's why you came out, you know, Mm -hmm you're no good for us right now out there acting the way you are. And I need you, but at the same time, I'm not going to have you out there pouting and, and bringing more attention, negative attention to us and to yourself that is going to cause a problem in our, in, into our culture, you know, because mm-hmm. uh, I don't, I don't want to be about that as a coach. I don't want, I don't want people to come and see us for the first time and say, man, these guys are, you know, a bunch of jerks or, you know, they may be able to play the game the right way, but man, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want them dating my daughter, you know, um, you know, and we ended up losing a game because I took him out. So, but again, and I told the guys, I said, guys, it's not that I don't want him playing, but he did that to himself. And I, I would do the same thing to you. You know, I, mm-hmm. I chewed somebody's butt the other night about, you know, not getting out of the box and he actually got out of the box. You know, Tony Endress, my assistant told me, he's like, well, he got out. And I said, okay. I said, and I told him, I said, Hey, I'm sorry. But I said, see, if I'm going to chew on you. I'm going to chew on the next guy. And you're one of our leaders. You know, I just, I want to make a point. And so, I mean, absolutely. I think it backfires, but um, you know, at the same time, I think you have to, you have to have that conviction and you have to know that mom and dad and grandma and grandpa or whoever else, and probably even my wife are up there saying, what are you doing? <laughs> but you have to, you have to block that out. And it is a very hard thing to do, but if, if you don't, you know, and here, Chuck, you know, a few years ago, you and I were coaching football and <laughs> We had a situation, I don't know if you remember that, but one of our – probably one of the best athletes to ever go through Centerville. We didn't yep. play him one game because, you know, his attitude. And, you know, I think the guys I think the guys see that and they respect that. And they know if you hold everybody accountable, one through 
50, one through 25, whatever you have on the roster. Um, that's the start of building a culture. Absolutely. Now, uh, Robert Jones has joined us in the chat room. Hey, Robert. And he says, can we ask questions at some point? Absolutely, buddy. You just uh, you put those in the chat room, and uh, we, we will try to get to them uh, the, the best we can. And, and Just you're... make sure they're words that we understand. <laughs> <laughs> possibly, possibly. Okay, you know, you, you know, you 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 beg the best question of all time, and and this this I I take this uh, real serious in in every sport that I've ever coached, whether it's little kids, whether it's all the way to the varsity level. Uh, my my lowest performing student athlete was treated the same as my star, and uh, and 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 I think that's why you know Hodges I I, I get that treatment where they do invite me to you know, to weddings and stuff like that. So that's, that, 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 that's a pretty cool thing. You know, any, any time that you treat your star the way you do your, your less blessed player, uh, you, you, you know, th- things are going to be pretty good. So uh, wait, waiting on a question for him now. They're they're Okay. So, so Chuck, how about like, you know, and I was just thinking about this, you know, you, you know, we're talking about the culture and athletics and this and that, but you know, and, and I'm not a classroom teacher like mm-hmm. you are, and you have been, but at the same time, being a school counselor, I see a lot of these kids, not as much as the teacher in the classroom. I think it also goes into how are you treating them in the classroom? And it goes to, are you the same person in the classroom as you are in the field or on the court? Uh, You know, as a teacher, I mean, you have to have those expectations. And I think, you know, and I've seen it, I've seen where teachers in the classroom, you know, allow things, maybe late homework. And it's like, Okay, so if you're allowing late homework to be acceptable in your classroom, how is it acceptable for that star athlete or one of your athletes to come in late to practice? And you're okay with that. Or, or you're not okay with that, I guess I should say. I'm sorry. That you're not okay with that. So I, I think it goes both ways. You know, you sitting there talking about that made me think about that. So mm-hmm. how, how do you handle that in the classroom when you have those athletes? Well, num- number one, and, and all my student athletes or students or whatever – uh, former, current, whatever, they're, they're, they're going to laugh a little bit. Um, I personally do not believe in homework. I believe in classwork. Now, if someone does, you know, someone were, you know, to miss a day or whatever, you know, then, then they would obviously have some homework. But as far as late policy, my late policy is the same for my athletes as it is for my, you know, my, my regular students. And I, and I think it's important, uh, you know, to, to do that. I, I'm fair across the board. But, but you bring up a, a, a great point saying, hey, are you the same on the, uh, the field of competition as you are in the classroom? My answer would be no, uh, not, not necessarily on discipline, because discipline and, you know, uh, you know building, you know, those relationships and things like that are very important. But uh, when, when I get on the field of competition, I, I, I had one student say, man, you're nothing like you are in the classroom. <laughs> you know, it, it's it. Sometimes it's like a light switch, especially on football Friday night. That's that's really what I'm going to miss this year. It'll be my first year in the last twenty that I haven't coached on Friday night. That's what I'm going to miss is that switch where I'm just all intense, focused into that game. You know, it's like almost like a hyper focus, and uh, it's it, it's definitely going to be different uh, this year. You know, when when you look at that, uh, you know what I think. I'm sorry, and I, you know, real quick, I think. You talk about that switch, and I, and I totally agree with that. But I think, too, and I'm sure you've gotten this before, um, but I've even gotten to the point where I've had I've gotten questioned by, you know, some people that, well, are you just a coach here or are you a counselor? You should be a counselor first and a coach. And I, and I totally agree. But, again, I think it comes back to that, you know, and I answer that with the way of I'm always coaching. Whether I'm a counselor mm-hmm. or not, I think um, – and I don't mean that in a way of that I'm taking athletics more serious than education because I'm not, um, because I'm, I'm one I've, I've had to talk to players that have moved on to college baseball that said, Hey, if I find out that you're struggling in class or you're not going to class, I'll call your coach and say, Hey, yank a scholarship, do something, you know, because it says student athlete, not athlete student, you know, the student part is going to get you further in life than your athletics for the most part, most the, you know, most of these guys and girls that we coach, but, that's a question that's always kind of boggled my mind a little bit because it's kind of like, man, I, I, I'm an impactful person, I think. And I I want to make an impact on, um, you know, non-athletes, athletes, athletes, whether they're a baseball player of mine or what, because like I said before, I don't care what you do for me on the field. What are you going to do afterwards? That's my biggest thing. When I, when I get called by uh, um, a company or a school for a reference, 
I want to make sure that you know this is what I'm going to say about you because you're a good person. And because my name's attached to that, you know, on that reference. So I guess that's my thing is I always, I always kind of waver on that saying, I think I, I mean, I'm the same person. I hope nobody, I hope they see me as just a good person to be around kids. And I think that's, and I guess that's one thing for coaches. I want you to kind of if listening and, and following us is be who you are. Yeah. There is a switch that you flip. I understand that. But at the same time, be who you are to the point of your athletes know it's a big game or they know it's a game that you should go in and win. So if I'm coaching against a team that's 0-32, I've got to coach the way I would be if it's a 32-0 and team. And you know what I'm saying? So it's the same thing in the classroom. And, you know, and I think in all across the board. So that, that's a question that I always kind of – I've gotten asked and I, I still always think about thinking, man, man. What am I doing that's not showing that? And I don't think it's, you know, anything. But other than the fact that, you know, I got baseball stuff and, you know, pictures in my office. But that's not because it's that I'm just strictly a baseball coach. That's just stuff that I'm – I don't have I don't have the awards. I don't have that stuff. That's in my house, you know, because I don't want people to come in and say, well, it's all about him because it's not, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, 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 okay. All right. Move, moving on. Uh, Coach Alexis Kozerich. Hey, thanks for coming in, buddy. Uh, she, she made the following comment. I made my track boys go home from practice because of language usage uh, they were using. After that, I, I saw a complete turnaround for my boys. They, they have to know where you stand as a coach. And I absolutely believe that. And, and you know, that's, that, that goes back to Coach uh, Hodges' philosophy, be who you are. And, and, and definitely follow through with that. That's like in the classroom. Uh, I, I, I don't let them get away with profanity, much like on the field of competition. I just don't let them do that. Uh, and, and they have to respect everybody. I think that's, uh, that, that's inherently important. Um, now, I, I was talking about that. You know, you remember me on Friday night. Uh, you know, there, 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 there were times now. Oh, I've got stories. No, man, we're, we're, we're not going to talk about those stories tonight though, folks. But, um, you know, I, and, and you kind of had that too, especially in football. As soon as that whistle, as soon as that first ball was kicked, it was like our eyes turned into this dog that was going after his treat. And we were like, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, and, you know, and you're right. I mean, football, football's a different animal when, with the switch. And I think that, but I think still, I think that you have, as a coach, you have to be that even kill. Um, you know, there's going to be times that I'm going to go argue a call, and I, I know I'm probably – I'm not going to get it overturned. I know that. But at the same time, my guys got to know that I have their back. And I think that, you know, there's times that my emotions have gotten the best of me, and I'm not proud of that. But, um, but yeah, there's, there, there's definitely that switch you've got to – you know, you got to flip in every sport that you coach. And – you know, you, you, the other thing is you got to know who your guys are and your girls and how they're going to respond. And but I think absolutely you got to stay convicted to what you believe. And if if you're not saying those those words and you're not allowing it, hey, get, get rid of them. You know, I've had to kick guys out of practice before because they're just being lazy. And it's not that I want to, but you you, you have to because if you're not if you're going to allow that person to do it, the next guy's going to do it, and the next guy, and then you're just going to have a, a a team full of cancers. Yeah, and you know that's uh, that, that's important also that you uh, nip things right in the bud. Um, now, as far as uh, and and again, we're 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 all about promoting culture, but but we'll be talking about other concepts as well. So don't uh, don't don't think that it, well. Actually, everything's about culture. I'll just throw that out there and 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 let that fall where it may be. Um, you know. It, what 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 is a black eye in sports today, Hodges? Is, is the amount of mad, uh, the mad culture in athletics today? When I talk about mad, I'm I'm not necessarily referring to coaches, uh, administrators, parents, student athletes. I'm talking about the entire culture as a whole. And and do you, do you think it's because you know people watch like uh, like uh, one one of my favorite pitches of all time did a no no in my opinion in in spreading negative culture and it was Jake Arrieta. And he says, I'll put a dent in that guy's head. He, he made that statement today. And Jake, if you're listening ever, man, that's just not the time to do that, especially in today's day and age. But yeah, I think, I, I think that that's a, that's a very, that's a very arrogant, uh, I heard the same comment and I'm thinking, man, Jake, you know, you don't say, and, and I, I, and I look at it as a baseball coach where, you know, I've had players come in and say, well, we're going to hit this guy. No, we're not. You know, I mean, if if it deems to get somebody hit, 
I, I hope that I can say enough to a coach on the other side to say, hey, you need to clean some things up just because this is what they're saying. This is what we're doing. And, you know, especially as a pitcher, I guess my thing is how if I'm Todd Frazier and I face Jake Ariad again, my livelihood's on the line. What, what are you talking about there? Are you talking about putting a baseball in my head? Because that's my livelihood. I've got kids at home. I got a wife. I mean, you don't, you don't, you don't bring that side into it. And it, I mean, be bigger than that. And that's why I said that emotion. I think so many times I've, I've probably said things in interviews that, you know, and everybody has that you look back and you're going, God, why in the hell did I say that? But I, I think one thing I think is the big mad thing in culture. And I think take professional sports out of it. And I think mm-hmm. so many people watch professional sports. They, they emulate their best, you know, their favorite player or whatever. But I think one thing that hurts culture so much is we're in a, and I may be wrong in saying this, we're in an era that everybody, everybody deserves a ribbon. And I don't, I do not, I do not believe in that. And I don't believe in the fact that, you know, you go lose a state championship game, you, you get a trophy. Yes. But you lose as a team, you win as a team, you know, you're going to have some bumps in the road here and there and some successes, but I think that's a big thing in moms and dads. And again, I hope I'm a dad that when my kids, if they, if they choose, they want to choose the athletic road and do things. I hope I'm not that parent that is always ridiculing them on the side of, well, you should have done this. You should have done that. Well, you should have gotten this, you know, you should have got this ribbon because you guys played well. That doesn't mean, you know, that's just in life too. Everybody, certain people get raises and they probably, they probably shouldn't deserve it. Mm -hmm. But you know what? That's life. Okay. Are, 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 are you ready for four things that I'm writing about in my book? And uh, you know what? I'll, I'll just bring them up. And, and, and if it makes people mad, angry, whatever, it's, uh, it, it, it's going to build character, folks. But that's that, why we're calling it mad culture, right? Get mad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, we're going to have differences. Yeah. Ro- Robert, I, I, I do have your, uh, your question, and I'll get to that here in just a few minutes here. Uh, I'm, I'm going to make four statements. As a parent, I want my child to have the greatest experiences in the world. And as a parent, we, we all want that. Okay? Two, as a parent, I want my child's experience to be positive. Okay? Now, uh, three, as a parent, I want my child to achieve more than I did in my lifetime. Here's when things shift. <coughs> Excuse me. Number four, as a parent, I want my child to not experience the pain, regret, mental discrepancies, nor struggles I did at their age. This is the issue. We are trying to live our lives through our kids again, and that's creating a mad culture. Bingo. Bingo. And I, I, I'm glad you said that because that's the other thing that I, I, I see so many times, and it's like, man. And, you know, and the crazy thing is, and I think, you know, baseball is at the root of all the evil. And <laughs> I'm a baseball coach. I love baseball. But I remember having a conversation that, you know, and I love I, – I, it's not that I don't like travel ball or anything. I do. But at the same time, some of these parents, like you said, are living through their kid, their son or their daughter, and they're spending thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on – sending them to dance, sending them to um, softball, sending them to baseball, basketball, tryouts, all this and that. And I guess I, I look at it as I've already started saving for my kids' as college because, again, that's what's going to get them to have a better life than what I've had. And I've had a great life. And there's things I wish I would have done differently. But at the same time, I want them to know kids, baseball, soccer, whatever you're going to do is going to not get you as far as your education. And I was an idiot in school. And I look back at that and say, God, I wish I would have applied myself more. And I, you know, I can admit that. And again, that's that vulnerability piece of, I'm going to, I'm going to share that with my kids. I want you to be a good person to everybody. And I, I, you hit it right on the head though. I think so many people live in their kids and things that they didn't have. And I, I hope I'm able to give my kids those resources but at the same time, I don't want them to get to the point where they're like, this is a job. <laughs> and, and I see that so many times. And I, you know, I heard from our guys, it's like, man, this is the best, this is the most fun I've ever had in baseball. This is, you know, that as a coach is what I want to hear because they love coming to practice. They love that we're going, you know, we're going to go out and have fun, but we're going to get work done. And 
So I, I'm, I'm glad you say that because, yeah, you hit it right on the head. I mean, quit living through your kids and in, instead be there for them and be that, not that friend, but be that person that the mistakes you made don't don't allow them to make their, you know, the same mistakes. Absolutely. And, you know, uh, not just to give a shameless plug, I mean, it is for the, the Creating Culture and Athletics Network anyway, but uh, this book, it's called The Mad Culture Present in the Athletics Today, and it should be out, I would say, by August. So uh, definitely, uh, definitely, uh, you know, if you're interested, shoot me a message, do whatever you got to do. Now, this is from Robert Jones. Coach Hodges, which coach had the biggest influence on you during your playing days, and what about his coaching culture do you implement today? Oh, um, you know, I had a lot of great coaches. I've I coached with a lot of great coaches. Um, but honestly, and I, you know, you and I were talking about this off the air. Probably the biggest swing that I had was in college, um, my junior year of college. Um, I, I went to a school, in Missouri. And I'll never forget, I talked to the coach and about, I was a catcher and I said, Hey, where do I need to go block? You know, where can I block? Where can I do some receiving stuff in the off season? And, you know, even during the season to stay, you know, stay sharp. And I'll never forget this. And my best friend, Dan and I, we talk about this all the time. And what came out of his mouth made me think about if I ever want to be a coach, how do I want my kids, my players, my athletes, my students, my, my own kids, how do they want to take this? I don't want them to ever have that feeling. He says to me, you don't need to worry about it. Okay. So I, I want to give every athlete a, a resource to become as good as they want to be and without trying to push them too hard. And I think so. So really my worst experience was ended up being my best experience. And I was done after that year. You know, I had some nagging injuries. I was never going to play professionally. I, you know, I knew that. Um, but I knew that if I wanted to make an impact on individuals and, and make them better people for life, I knew that I had to give them the resources I had and know that when I'm wrong, to admit it and find them that resource. I may not have the answer, but I'm going to do what I can to find it. And so my, my worst experience ended up being my best experience. And again, I had a lot of great coaches. Uh, you know, Bill Huseman stands out. I never played an inning for him, but, you know, coaching with him, coaching or, you know, playing against him, I, I saw that, that passion that he had. Fire. Fire. He, 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 had, he had fire coming out of his hair, man. Well, and, and the love that he had for his guys, yeah, too. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, a lot of people don't see that stuff. But And you get wrapped up again. It's that switch. It's that emotion. And, um, you know, my high school coach, Brent Marching, was – you know, a great guy that taught me things for life. Um, my brother-in-law, Russ, was my assistant. Um, yeah, Cam Walker, Jonathan Matthews, Rick Matthews. Uh, you know, I can go down the list. And, I, you know, I got buddies Chuck, now. Chuck Banks. Chuck no, Banks. I, I gotta... Chuck <laughs> Banks. But, no, I, I, I can go down the list. And, you, you know, there's things that I took away from those guys, even the, even the really, really good ones that I knew that I didn't want to maybe do. And – you know, Coach Huseman, was, we were talking here a month or so ago, and he goes, you know, he goes, I saw a lot of things that I would have done, and you did them differently and were successful. And I, I had to change my thought now as a coach, going getting back into it, this is Bill, that, wow, you did some of the same things but differently. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it, it's just those little things. So I think that um, – you know, you always have, I guess my thing is in anything in life, and I tell our guys this, what is, what happens to you is going to, what's going to reflect on you is how you handle the situation, whether it be good, whether it be bad. You're, we always talk about, we're going to win humbly. We're going to lose humbly. You know, we're never going to get too high. We're never going to get too low. And, you know, at the end of the day, use these life experiences to your advantage and what you're going to, you know, take the good, take the bad, take the indifferent and figure out how am I going to use this? How can I use this as me? Again, that goes back to be who you are, mm -hmm. have that conviction. And just because Jonathan Matthews teaches something hitting wise, and I respect the heck out of that guy, doesn't mean that the kid that I'm working with is going to be able to get what Jonathan teaches. It, you know, and he's that way too. But I, you have to teach the individual. And I think that's one of the big thing, biggest things I learned, too. 
You know, I, I, I look at softball uh, in general, and uh, I, I remember, you know, I, I was probably – uh, a mad parent slash mad coach slash whatever, okay? You know, when when Chelsea was growing up. And I was hard on her. And, you know, there, I remember when they changed her swing and then she didn't hit for nothing. And I was like, no, no, yeah, be, be, because it's 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 all a little bit different. Now, we, we have roughly uh, four and a half minutes left in the broadcast. It went by super fast tonight. Um, but b- before we get into our closing, I do want to throw out this. Be sure to uh, you know type in Coaching Culture and Athletics in Facebook. Follow our page. We're, we're right around that 500 follow mark. Our, our goal is to hit 1,000 uh, by the end of the summer. And, uh, and, and also, you know, follow us on Twitter, at CCA Culture uh, on Twitter. Now, uh, I, I just want to throw this out there. Hodges, don't you think we should have a weekly show and it should be at 8 p.m. on Sunday nights? You going to be able to swing that? Uh, you better talk to my wife. <laughs> like I say, hey, we're, I mean, you know, and that's the thing. We're in two different, uh, you know, areas of our lives. And that's, yeah. you know, and I tell yeah. that to our guys too. I'm like, you know, practicing wise, I'm like, hey, and, and I'm always open with them. Hey, I we're going to practice a seven tonight because I want you guys to have a little extended break with your families. And, you know, I've got to spend some time with my family. And, um, you know, it, it's when they hear that and they know that, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. They respect that, and I think that I would love to do something like that. Absolutely, I would love to do a, a weekly thing. And you know, you and I have talked about, um, you know, I've I've had some things in my life that uh, you know, some adversity at a young age that I definitely want to share. And it's it's not about me, but, but it's about again, it's about that overcoming and and not and not dwelling on the negative impact that you know life has thrown at me. It's about what have I done to overcome it and maybe maybe change i'm not i'm not out to change everybody i know i'm not going to do that but if you can change one or two or three people that they can change one or two or three people and then they can change one or two or three people that's where you start seeing more of a positive impact now i i have to throw this out there you know folks uh we are trying to change the mad culture in athletics one soul at a time we appreciate everybody coming on tonight uh you know follow us on all the social media accounts so you know when we go live for everybody within the creating culture in athletics this is the coach hodge and coach bank show good night good night